Prihajamo na naše naslednje predavanje, katerega ima profesor dr. Božidar Pavelič. Je profesor z Hrvaške fakultete za stomatologijo iz Zagreba. Njegovo predavanje bo tako, kot smo bili dogovoreni v angleščini. Vmes smo naredili seveda neko anketo, tako da mu da v prihodnje, če vas bo več želelo v hrvaščini, bojo lahko predavatelji predavali v hrvaškem jeziku. Zaenkrat seveda ostajamo na uradnem jeziku, ki je angleški. Tako da bi predstavil z našega kolega dr. Boždar Paveliča. Skratka, profesor Boždar Pavelič, zaposlen na oddelku za enodontijo in restorativno stomatologijo stomatološke fakultete v Zagrebu, doktoriral in master of science, specialist in odontologije in predstologije in oralne patologije in je redni profesor na oddelku za enodonsko in restorativno zobotravstvo, je član Hrvaškega enodonske zveze in tudi član Evropske zveze za endodontologijo, predsednik Hrvaške zveze za estetsko zobotravstvo, številna predavanja vabljena tako doma kot v Tuini in avtor večjih raziskovalnih in profesionalnih člankov v širom različnih publikacij. Profesor Pavelic, čujemo se? Ja, ja vas čujem, čujete vi mene? Super, vse v redu. Ja. So, if you can present your lecture, we'll be very keen to listen to you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So, before I start with this lecture, I would like to take the opportunity to thank the Organizing Committee that invited me and gave me a chance to be in Puerto Rouge and, of course, present this lecture. So, because of Corona time, it wasn't possible to be uh, physically in Puerto Rouge, but with help of my alter ego, I will try to be in Puerto Rouge virtually, and I will try in next 45 minutes uh, to present my, my own experience in uh, work with fiber reinforced composite materials. So, uh, Let's jump shortly to today's agenda. Uh, this lecture is divided in two parts. In the uh, first part, we will talk about theory. Don't worry, that will be really, really basic theory about chemical and physical characteristics of fibers and the fiber reinforced composite materials. And of course, in the second part, we will talk about uh, clinical procedures step by step from preparation to final restoration. We'll start with this definition of fiber reinforced composite. Uh, I like this very short and very clear definition that uh, fiber reinforced composites are combination of two materials, reinforcing phase into form of the fibers and matrix polymer phase or, or composite materials. Uh, why? Why uh, fiber? Uh, the primary role of the, this fiber is, is to increase the strength and stiffness of the matrix polymer. And now rhetoric question, why? And what we really need to know before we start using fiber in our daily clinical and restorative procedure. Basic theory, uh, we will give some information about chemical structure, about fiber architecture, then method of, of incorporation, then explain what does it mean if, if you say continuous fiber or discontinuous fiber. Yes, of course, uh, there are many types of fibers available on reinforcement and each type has its own unique characteristics. We will start, with uh, classification according to their chemical structure. There are four groups. First one is glass fiber, then polyethylene and glass and polyethylene fibers, they are aesthetic fibers. Second group, they are aramid or Kevlar and carbon fibers and they are non-aesthetic fiber. 
uh, about the arrangement and uh, position this uh, in uh, volume, uh, we can uh, classify it as uninteractional fiber, then bidirectional fiber. Sorry, do you hear me? And hello. Yes, everything's okay. We hear you. Okay, no okay. Problem. I have some problems here. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, that uh, uh, three uh, three different parts. Then uninteractional fiber. Then bidirectional fiber, and finally we have multi-directional or two-dimensional fiber. Uh, this arrangement and orientation of fibers define the properties and uh, structural characteristics of composite material and of uh, or restoration. Uh, then according to fiber length can be class classify classified, sorry, uh, as a composite with a long fiber or continuous fiber, then composites with short fiber or discontinuous fiber, and finally hybrid fiber reinforced composites where two or more types of fibers are reinforced in a single matrix structure of composite materials. So if you read in an article that they used continuous fiber, it means that use long fiber. If they use discontinuous fiber, it means that use short fiber. What is important about the surface of uh, fiber? Uh, this surface uh, are either pre-impregnated during manufacturing process or require pre-impregnation before application into the resin matrix. Uh, if you talk about resin impregnation, this term describing the penetration of resin material between the fibers. So if you talk about resin impregnation, this impregnation relates to the surface wetting of properties of the fibers, then distance of individual fibers from each other, and uh, viscosity of the resin material. Uh, an article from Bear and co-workers flags for properties of fiber enforced composite using vacuum pressure or manual adaptation manufacturing process. We will see now conclusion, not only the fiber content, but also the matrix composition and the bond between the fibers and the matrix determine the properties of fiber reinforced composite. Uh, what is or, to, or, to, or what are uh, uh, clinical benefits uh, that are uh, direct, quick, and easy application, then minimally invasive procedure, completely matter-free or compatible with composite materials, then restoration are easy to repair, excellent bonding properties, and finally can be used in different indications. Uh, what can we use in our praxis? Most commonly use fibers in the clinical procedure. Uh, in my office are two different uh, fibers. First one is rebond, second one is Everstick Perio. What is different? Uh, rebond uh, is polyethylene fiber or are polyethylene fibers with uh, specific characteristic as a spectrum of 215 fibers with very high molecular weight. And what is very important for clinic and excellent resistance to stretch and distortion and very high resistance to traction. Impact strength is five times higher than that of iron. So uh, a ribbon system or ribbon fiber these fiber and or fibers are not pre-impregnated with uh, uh, organic matrix, but 
uh, these fibers are pre impregnated with or pre treated with gas plasma. And the, what is gas plasma? It's a pre treatment that reduces the fibrous superficial tension, ensuring a good chemical bond to composite materials. Uh, on this slide, you can see different sizes of ribbon fiber. And uh, on right side, here you can see this, you can find in a basic package. And what is very interesting for orthodontic treatment, that's a special fiber ribbon orthodontic in one millimeter wide that has a lower modulus of elasticity and lower tensile strength than other ribbon products. Please, please, that is really very important. Before start using the fiber, read these instructions, instructions, sorry. Uh, that is very important to do pre-treatment with adhesive. It means uh, be careful, why? Because adhesive systems contain components such as, as acid or solvents that can compromise the adhesion between the resin and the fiber. And you can see that what, what uh, on this left part of the slide, that wet ribbon with unfilled bonding resin, that could be the best solution to, uh, to have only uh, this uh, pure adhesive, it means metacrylate, not uh, use the, if you, uh, if you can, uh, to, to change this, this your work, then do not uh, wet this fiber with one step or a flowable composite without adhesive system. And that is very important to know for clinician. Uh, of course, you, you, need, you need for restoration to have that uh, use the adhesive system for uh, cavity preparation or during cavity preparation for restoration. And also you need characteristic adhesive for fiber. And of course, sometimes, for example, in case when you, and use, for example, in this case, if you have natural tooth and a metal ceramic or ceramic crown, and you need uh, adhesive to activate this uh, surface of cavity, then you need this, uh, this uh, adhesive system or modern adhesive system with these components, but also you need this uh, pure adhesive system for, for this fiber. Uh, about glass fiber, I use this Everstick glass fiber. Uh, what is important for, for this uh, glass fiber? You can uh, do typical orientation of this fiber, unidirectional fiber and uh, like bidirectional mesh. Uh, I use, uh, prefer or this left part. Uh, of this slide, you can see this post perio CNB and ortho. Uh, what is necessary to know? Uh, not this number is, doesn't matter. That's not important. That's important that you know that if you need something from post for perio or ceramic or, or bridge or ortho, then uh, then you take this, this fiber. It means that it's a relation or a correlation between structure and of course of clinical, clinical application. Uh, next term is IPN or interpenetrating polymer network. That is combination of linear monomer and cross-linked polymer. Uh, why is important? Because stability of this uh, fiber. Uh, in Everstick, you have this JMA as a cross-linked polymer and uh, PMA or polymethyl metacrylate uh, is a linear monomer. Uh, you will see on this um, uh, picture that you have two types of PMMA that's uh, pre-polymerized and this for the outer part that's not polymerized part of PMMA. That's very, very important. Why? Because that uh, is proper bonding between these fibers and the composite is the key factor for the successful treatment result in our clinical, clinical work. 
uh, where fibers can be used, uh, clinical use of fiber in periodontology, in restorative dentistry, in prostodontics and gerodontology, orthodontics, uh, traumatology, and uh, for temporary or semi-permanent or permanent restoration. Uh, very shortly, temporary, it means days to weeks for, for example, for post-traumatic in therapy of injuries or intraoperative in periodontology or periodontal surgery. Semi-permanent means months to years. It means for pre-surgical, where, where we have advanced bone resorption and progressive tooth mobility or retentive following orthodontic treatment. And finally, permanent for many years or many years, uh, that is with restorative insertion, replace missing teeth or tooth, or stabilization of periodontally weakened teeth. And also social dimension of this uh, indication that's remaining dentition for which prostodontic treatment is not indicated. Cavity preparation. Uh, basic rule, first, bad joint preparation without beveling. Next, groove preparation, if you uh, try to make this uh, splinting. Cavity dipped about two to three millimeters and cavity wide about three to four millimeters. Of course, that is basic, basic rule. Actors and co-workers suggested that different preparation designs, inlay retained or surface retained, had no significant effect on the fracture strength of fiber and fossil composite in anterior region. How to insert the fibers into to prepare tooth cavity? Basic rule, we have three layers. First one is basic layer, it means composite. Second one is combination, composite and fiber. And finally, superficial area composite. If we start with base procedure, like in restorative dentistry, in restorative treatment, procedure etching, rinsing, drying, then adhesive system, polymerization, and then you can apply the first layer of flowable composite material and polymerization. We'll finish with first layer, then second layer procedure, a thin layer of flowable composite is placed on the primary layer, and then prepared fiber is gently inserted into that composite. Uh, that's one possibility, or if you have this flowable composite with short fibers, then apply short fibers flowable composite on this first layer. And polymerization. And finally, superficial area, again, composite material. And on the polymerized intermediate layer, uh, final layer of composite material is placed. Can be or flowable or compact composite material. Uh, what is necessary to know about flowable resin composite? Uh, I know that you all know that basic information that you have experience with flowable composite, that's standard flowable composite, but less uh, five years, something is changed in this part of restorative dentistry. Uh, now we have this uh, flowable composite with uh, short fibers, now have genian unvesal injectable. It means that is nearly too compact composite and you can use in all classes and for splinting also. Uh, for this uh, flowable composite with short fibers, what we know that we can use to, like dentin substitute. Please uh, don't forget it. That is not 
flowable composite materials for final restoration. That is substitute for dentin. In this material, you can choose two options. One is dentin shade, that's optimal for more aesthetic reason and uh, aesthetic results uh, for, for example, uh, uh, coal buildup in aesthetic zone. Or bulk shade, you can see different in that depth of cure. On dentin, that's two millimeters, and on bulk is 5.5 millimeters. That's optimal for deep posterior cavities and for fast placement. Direct restoration, what is characteristic? That's the same in start after adhesive application. In uh, first class, it's class one. You can apply this material, but if you have class two, then it is necessary uh, first to uh, build up the, these mesial or distal uh, walls and with conventional composite and polymerized and then applying the the fiber uh, flowable composite materials and uh, finally cured and covered with composite material. Uh, that's the same procedure uh, like in restorative, normal restorative treatment. Uh, note that, that we have two shades, bulk shade with 5.5 uh, millimeter penetration of polymerization lamp and light, sorry, and dentin shade with two millimeter penetrations of polymerization light. Uh, core buildup with this material is really easy to do the same procedure like in restorative treatment and then applied the uh, Everix flow, for example, and finally polymerized, and you can, uh, you can uh, now, you, you can do the final uh, preparation and take impression for this crown, for example. Uh, what is also very important for daily practice, that is that uh, if you use, if you use this uh, flowable composite, it's necessary to know what is about this uh, uh, flowability. Uh, for example, you can see that's genial flow, and you can see that genial flow is more lanic indications. It means that it's super for first layer or combination with fiber if put it into the uh, prepared cavity. Or you have low flow flowability, like this general universal flow, that's useful more for restorative, restorative indication. Polymerization of fiber and forced composite, uh, what we necessary to know, minimally you have three times in polymerization of splints uh, without th that first uh, polymerization of hazard system. Please uh, don't do it with only one polymerization that that uh, then or that is a problem. You will have not uh, good results after the uh, final therapy. Clinical procedure. Now we will see clinical cases. First case, severe trauma and New Year's party. Young lady uh, fell and struck her front teeth against the floor. She visited our department and what's happened, both maxillary central incisors were broken and the walls. And crown of the right lateral maxillary incisor was completely broken. Question was, what can we do with lateral incisor? With uh, central incisor, of course, we will try it after the root treatment use the composite material or later the, the crowns. But uh, that was problem with this lateral incisor. We used Relax Fiber Pool system. That system composed of uh, applicab system with elongation tip, then Relax Fiber Post and Relax Fiber Post drills. What is characteristic of this fiber post? Uh, fiber posts are made from glass fibers embedded into a composite 
resin matrix, which characteristic this, this superficial area, this microporous surface, which provides mechanical retention for cement materials. Uh, then what is important that this elasticity of relaxed fiber post that, uh, that's similar to human dentin for a lower risk of root fracture. And this uh, applicap allegation tips that it's very, very good for inserting this material into the root canals. Sorry. Uh, treatment uh, rubber then was applied and root canal preparation for post started. First, the gutta percha was removed and done with this standard codeine. Uh, these drills, uh, root canal preparation can be done in a conservative way without overly removing of root canal dentin and control of posts or seated in the canal. Uh, then canal was filled with composite cement applied and the placement of composite core buildups that finish with nanofill composite that was placed with plastic instrument and shaped the crown. And uh, with uh, flexible suplex disc, uh, we use that for basic tooth countering and uh, area of interproxal surfaces are then countered as muted with a finishing strips. That's the fine polishing discs and rubber polisher were used to finish the polish and enhance development of grooves on the labial and insole characteristics. We use this all photo and of course control also with mirror. And you will see now final results that is clinical appearance at about 50 months <clears throat> follow in follow-up control. Uh, next case is complex trauma after care accident with questionable therapeutic procedure. You can see this patient uh, lobby and part of view of clinical situation and x-rays. Uh, after concilium, what, what what was uh, I, I, it, it's very difficult to say uh, what was good or bad because uh, this patient uh, has not the other bone and problem in this intercanine sector, and it can be concluded that the teeth are lost. But we try to make something. Try with first step was uh, the to do the, this root treatment. In two visits, in four visits, they start with root treatment, rinsing, drying, and an application of uh, calcium hydroxide and uh, provium, uh, provisorium filling. And in next visit, we started with uh, root canal treatment and finish with with filling with good aperture with cold lateral condensation. And you can see this X-ray uh, and uh, provisional filling. And next visit, uh, first step was uh, to do this uh, composite filling. And after that, we'll start in next appointment, the preparation for, uh, for splinting, for permanent splinting. You can see that was this part of or frontal region was uh, isolated by a rubber dam. And in interdental part, you can see this wet jets gummy that excellent, excellent uh, for this isolation. If you do this sprinting, uh, then we used this um, ribbon fiber, classical procedure, etching, rinsing, dried, then application of adhesive system. You can see this situation after that uh, adhesive was applied. And uh, this gloss is uh, very important to know that uh, all, all parts of this cavity was covered with adhesive system. Uh, next step is uh, preparing of fiber. 
first step is uh, adhesive system and without polymerization in the, this stage, then applying of uh, flowable composite, and then this fiber with flowable composite is uh, positioned on uh, embedded in the uh, positioned into the, this growth cavity. You can see on this part of of uh, on palatal view. Let's recognize this this fiber into this growth cavity, then polymerized and uh, uh, covered with uh, final layer of composite material and polymerized. Rubidum was removed, and you can see final uh, final situation after the uh, the the rubidum was removed, and of course that's very important. Uh, to do this uh, check of uh, clinical articulation and occlusion. So next, next case is a splinting in the therapy of severe periodontitis. Uh, you will see now patient, you can see that's in the frontal area, very deep pocket with bone resorption and okay, clinical findings. Uh, that's the always the same procedure: isolation of this part, application, uh, uh, this um, applying of this this wet jet gummy in, in, in interdental space, and after ad adhesive, that first layer is applied. That's very important in this area to protect that uh, later push it the rest of composite in interdental space. Uh, then I use this Everstick Perio, that is fiber, glass fiber that is uh, by manufacturing pre impregnated with, with uh, uh, organic resin. That this fiber was applied into the cavity and covered with composite material. Then the rubber dam was removed. And of course, again, check of the occlusion and uh, final polishing and control after treatment. And uh, you will see now situation and follow-up of X-ray control in um, 2011 and situation in 2019. The different, uh, I, I can't believe it, that's really possible, but uh, you can see this apical area. And indeed that's, you can see this resorption. But if a test of cold sensitivity that showed positive, positive reaction. Uh, in 2017, I suggested patient that please remove it and make this prosthetic. No, 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 I am very happy and that this is okay. <laughs> then it's okay. Uh, next case, a uh, vertical fracture and uh, how can we use natural tooth as a pontic? You can see clinical findings, labial view and palatal view. And before extraction, this uh, cavity preparation was done. Then very, very gently, this tooth was extracted and the wound was saturated and the patient has bitten into sterile ghost for about this next 10 minutes. In these 10 minutes, you can see this tooth and vertical fracture. Uh, in these 10 minutes, uh, this uh, part in cervical area was separated, coronal part from radical part, then prepare cavity and filled with composite material formed and polymerized, uh, polishing and finishing, and prepared for uh, way to back in the mouth. Uh, I used uh, this metal bore and um, Fix it with, uh, with uh, flower composite material. Uh, Ghost was, was removed. Uh, rubber dam is applied. Was applied, and um, a tooth was positioned in uh, um, uh, the same position that before extraction. Uh, uh, then fixed with uh, small part of flower composite material. Uh, ribbon fiber was prepared. Then you can see this this uh, K 
cavity preparation for volatile review. The same procedure for spartist composite material, then combination composite and fiber, and finally composite again. And uh, that's very important. Please control this area between natural tooth and pontic. Rubidum was removed and final finishing and polishing. Uh, such as was removed uh, one week later. And you can see there's that situation after this treatment. Only in uh, one visit, you need about maybe hour or maybe, maybe more, maybe, maybe in 45 minutes, one hour, you can finish that. And uh, at the moment, uh, this point is now, I think, over 15 years in the mouth. And finally, restorative therapy of missing tooth. You will see also situation after orthodontic therapy. That was a problem. What, what is possible to do in this situation? A uh, young person, I think that is about uh, 15 years old. I'm not sure now. And the uh, problem was in this case, what can we do? Uh, why? In uh, this central size was problem with uh, root resorption. But you can see this other ridge is that's problem with uh, implant therapy. And I start with uh, preparation, but not in palatal parts, then in labial part. Let's uh, start and we'll, then I applied um, uh, Optidam, that's uh, for isolation, and finish this preparation. Uh, what, what, I, what I then, uh, uh, what I think about this situation, uh, problem was uh, with, uh, with space for fiber and for composite, then uh, it looks like uh, preparation for, for veneer, but it uh, has to be a little bit uh, deeper, about minimally two, two millimeters. And uh, then restorative procedure, uh, how can you see? Uh, in a lateral scissor is not prep or non-prep part, and this is only preparation of this area. Uh, etching procedure, then rinse, dried, and adhesive application. And that's a really excellent situation if you use this uh, uh, Optodam. Why? Because patient uh, can buy it. You, you have, I could say, the same situation like in the laboratory or in Phantom. Then first step is applying of uh, flower composite material. And then uh, first step is to do incisal part of restoration with transcent composite material. Uh, and that's very important to have uh, excellent contact, uh, contact between this restoration and uh, tooth. And for, for this better occasion, that's very important that uh, composite uh, which tooth is filled with flower composite. If you have, uh, or if you see some some uh, residuum or leakage that's necessary to to put it with uh, flower composite and with probe and polymerized. Second step is to do the rest part of the crown with uh, composite material and polymerized. <coughs> Sorry. Next step is measured and uh, prepared the fiber for, for application. And uh, after the, the, this fiber, uh, it has been applied, then polymerized, then, then finished with uh, the final layer of composite material. Again, filled with uh, flower composite, all parts which, if you saw not perfect contact with, with restoration and final morphology. And after we finish with, with morphology, then uh, 
final uh, restoration with with uh, uh, or a uh, diamond bar uh, fine or with with uh, softflex or uh, polyer gummy and you will now see the the final final results of of this restoration so finally uh, Fiber and forced composite therapy is a minimally invasive therapy procedure and can be completed in one visit. Next step is an alternative to conventional fixed dental prosthesis or implant supported crowns or bridges. And in some cases, they represent the therapy of choice and allows clinical results that we could not achieve before. So, uh, and uh, with these slides, I am not sure, I hope that I am in time. Uh, thank you very much for, for your attention. And of course, if you have some questions, uh, that's my mail, don't, don't hesitate to con contact me. And thank you, thank you very much for your attention and my apologies because these technical problems that I have here in Zagreb. Thank you very much. Uh, dear Professor Pavelic, uh, yeah? thank you for your extremely nice uh, lecture. Oh, uh, we thank especially, you. especially liked your uh, clinical presentation of the cases. That is the point of our uh, meeting here. We like to see some different clinical procedures uh, along the way. Uh, and you don't have to apologize for, uh, for your, any problems because everything uh, was done correctly. Everything was super here. We hear you, everything. So everything is okay. okay. Uh, so let's let's was... check if there are some any uh, questions so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are no questions. Uh, of Thanks. course, we discuss if there are some questions will be later, or we can uh, okay. transfer them to your uh, email and you, you promised uh, to answer them, of course. Yeah, that, that, okay, that, that was a little bit stressing for me, but uh, I, uh, I, I'm not sure uh, that you uh, hear me correctly, but I have this, some problems and uh, which, uh, with connection, but it's, uh, when it's all okay, then that's good. I'm very happy. Everything was super, no, no interruption at all during your presentation. So perfect for, 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 from our side of you. So again, uh, thank you very much for your uh, lecture again and best wishes to Zagreb. Thank you. Bye. Bye.